Hello and welcome to Press TV News Analysis. I'm Kaveh Tafai. In this news analysis, we'll be discussing the situation in Syria and in particular, the recognition of the newly formed opposition national coalition, newly recognized by the U.S. as the legitimate representative of the Syrian people. Well, at the same time, the U.S. has blacklisted the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Nusra Front as a terrorist group. Why would the U.S., who has been accused of funding terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, now blacklist this group? More importantly, what does it say about the new national coalition who wants this terrorist group accused of executions, war crimes, and also accused of being responsible for the killing of U.S. ambassador in Libya, to want the U.S. to rethink their decision? We've made a decision that the uh, Syrian opposition coalition is now inclusive enough, is reflective and representative enough of the Syrian population that we consider them the legitimate representative of the Syrian people uh, in opposition to the Assad regime. And uh, so we will provide them recognition and obviously with that recognition. Recognizing the umbrella insurgent group as a sole representative of the Syrian people brings the U.S. in line with its Arab allies and the European Union, including Britain and France, which took the same step earlier. Britain, France and several of America's Arab allies made a similar move shortly after the opposition body was created at a meeting of its representatives in Qatar last month. Hours after the announcement, Russia reacted to the move, slamming the U.S. recognition of the umbrella insurgent group. As the coalition has been recognized as the only legitimate representative, it seems that the United States decided to place all bets on the armed victory of this very national coalition. Washington's move followed by a similar declaration by the so-called Friends of Syria at a meeting in Morocco. In a statement, the participants declared that the newly formed opposition coalition is a legitimate representative of the Syrian people. The recognition is the latest in a series of moves the U.S. and its allies have taken to bolster the fractured groups that seek a regime change in Syria. Well, we've long advocated for Bashar al-Assad's departure. If he goes now, we would view that as a very positive development. He is an ally of Iran. He's an ally of Hezbollah. We understand that if jihadists were to come in, it wouldn't be good but it perhaps wouldn't be as bad as the current situation. Many experts believe that the decision would reignite the flames of unrest in the country, causing more violence and bloodshed in the crisis hit Syria. The declaration also comes following the U.S. blacklisting of the al-Qaeda-affiliated al-Nusra Front as a terror group. But the move is seen as nothing more than a propaganda gesture, since the armed groups fighting in Syria include foreign militants who are also linked to the Al-Qaeda. Syria has been hit by deadly unrest since March 2011. The Syrian government has repeatedly held the US and its regional allies, including Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Turkey, responsible for arming and funding the opposition. According to many experts, Washington's support of the foreign-backed militants contradicts its policy on al-Nusra when it comes to its war against terrorism. But how can Washington justify such contradiction? Yeah, they don't feel that they need to justify it. They have uh, billions of dollars worth of propaganda outlets like the mainstream media here in the West that will convince most readers and most uh, viewers that, these are, these are, that, uh, that there is not an incongruence between these two ideas, but in fact there absolutely is. Although some countries, including Russia and China, oppose foreign military intervention in Syria and try to resolve the situation through negotiations, the U.S. and its allies continue to insist on the military option, thus pushing Syria towards a long battle that has already destroyed the country's infrastructure beyond repair. Let me introduce our guest for this edition of the News Analysis, founder of StopImperialism.com, Eric Dreitzer, joins us from New York. We have political analyst Jihad Murakade joining us from Beirut, and author and historian Webster Griffin Tarpley joining us from Washington. Gentlemen, welcome. Eric Dreitzer, let me start with your recognition by the U.S. of the National Coalition. Barack Obama has said, quote, the National Coalition was now inclusive, reflective, and representative enough for Washington to take this big step. Is it? 
Well, I think that this is, of course, a laughable statement. The reality is that this uh, coalition was created at the behest of Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration. Uh, they have loaded it with uh, Muslim Brotherhood members, as well as many other factions, many of which have their relations to Al Qaeda and other extremists. So for them to say that it's representative of the Syrian people is to say that, in fact, it's representative of the agenda of Washington and London and Paris and so forth. And more to the point, the the uh, terrorist elements within the Free Syrian Army, as well as the al-Nusra Front, these are the same elements that will be receiving aid from the United States. The so-called coalition is merely a front to allow the United States to publicly support those same elements, which they've been doing covertly since the very beginning of the conflict. Jihad Marakata, do, do you agree with our guest there, Eric Dreitzer? Uh, no, I do not, because I feel that uh, the people who are fighting in Syria are uh, absolutely representative of the Syrian people. It is not like the U.S. has uh, picked up a few people here and there and put them together. Uh, no, these people are representative of the Syrian people. I can accept that there are people who uh, uh, support uh, still the uh, present regime. So the Syrian people is not only those who do not support the regime. We have people who do support the regime. But in general, one can say that there are most of the people in Syria are against the, the present regime. Well, so Griffin Tarpley, uh, let's look at the timing. Why would the U.S., which supported al qaeda linked groups, decide to blacklist the al qaeda al-Nusra Front as a terrorist group one day before this Friends of Syria meeting that was uh, held in Morocco, that's being held in Morocco. I think this is a contortion by the State Department because they can see that um, this entire strategy is, uh, it has feet of clay. Look, uh, the Assad regime from the very beginning has said that the rebellion is composed of Al-Qaeda terrorists. And I was able to confirm that on the ground myself in a fact-finding tour with some others about a year ago, that what was rebelling against uh, Assad was primarily death squads composed of terrorists. Now the United States State Department turns around and says, yes, al-Nusra, a main component, probably the leading edge of the fighting forces uh, arrayed in Syria, yes, they are terrorists, they are al-Qaeda. This is 29 major death squads. They are the ones who seem to have been able to take over uh, at least a couple of uh, military bases. But then at the same time, the United States government also says they are Al-Qaeda, and in effect, we're recognizing them as the sole legitimate government of Syria. Now, this is a dangerous thing for many, many reasons. Let me just focus on inside the United States. Notice Hillary Clinton didn't go. I think Hillary Clinton didn't really have the stomach flu. I think she had some kind of a diplomatic illness. She didn't want to get photographed cavorting with Al-Qaeda people in Marrakesh because she's running for president. How long can this uh, go on, this balancing act of claiming that some are Al-Qaeda but the rest are legitimate representatives? I would point you to one thing. If you go to the Obama White House website, and if you're in a U.S. citizen, you can uh, protest against this. There's a petition on the We, we the People part of the uh, White House website. There's a petition there that says, cease all funding and support for al-Qaeda terrorists and extremist rebels in Syria. And it's getting tremendous support from uh, here in the United States. So here's a way you can register your dissent against this lunatic policy of turning Syria over to al-Qaeda terrorist death squads, which the, the State Department, at least half of it, is, uh, is going with. This is the basis of an Obama gate. You can see the handwriting on the wall. Watergate, you know, the second term of a president. This is the time for scandals, and the big scandal is the one we see right here. Judd Marcotta, I'm going to get to you since you're uh, uh, laughing at that uh, statement by uh, Webster Griffin Tarfley, but Eric Dreitzer, uh, there's a sign of difference that's coming through right now based on this new coalition block uh, with, uh, well, it appears with the U.S. Because of uh, uh, what uh, the uh, leader has said, Ahmad Muaz al-Khatib, 
uh, on the decision to blacklist this al Qaeda linked Al Nusra Front. He has said calling Al Nusra Front a terrorist organization must be re-examined. Are we seeing signs right now at this stage, this beginning stage, of differences between the bloc and the U.S. and perhaps its Western allies? Well, whatever differences exist, these are uh, pretty much irrelevant because this so-called coalition is a puppet of the United States. It's important to remember that uh, Khatib, this nominal leader of this organization, has already made public statements saying that he is uh, in favor of turning Syria into a purely Islamic state. Now think about the implications of that. That means what? Genocide and ethnic cleansing for the Christian population, for the Druze population, for the Kurds. Uh, what kind of a country is going to exist in Syria under the leadership of these so-called representatives. Again, I would remind people that uh, the al-Nusra Front and the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group and the many other foreign-based elements that have uh, come into Syria at the behest of NATO, they have no interest in Syria as a nation. Their interest is in uh, bringing chaos and, uh, well, as, as the uh, gentleman in Washington said, death squads is the tactic. We've seen terror terrorist bombings, and this should remind people of the situation in Iraq, which was again very similar. And uh, I think the other point that needs to be made is that all of this is couched in this propaganda assault surrounding chemical weapons. The idea that the Assad regime is going to use chemical weapons against his own people is, aside from being laughable, is a transparent propaganda ploy by Washington to legitimize the intervention, the military actions that they've been hoping for all along. That none of this is by accident. The United States and its partners have attempted to destroy Syria from the beginning. They simply didn't expect it to take so long. Well, you mentioned the uh, Libyan Islamic Fighting Group there. Jed Morakata, I mean, uh, let's look at it. The, this group, the LIFG, it was officially merged with uh, Al Qaeda back in 2007. It's been documented that NATO in 2011 armed, funded, and provided air support for them during the uh, overthrow of the Libyan governments. Why would the U.S. use these groups and then list them as, for example, a terrorist organizations, given their history? We could look at how, uh, for example, it was not so long ago, the Taliban, when they armed them with these shoulder-to-fire missiles to fight the Soviet army in Afghanistan. First of all, I would like to say that I do not believe uh, that everybody who is fighting the uh, Syrian regime is Al-Qaeda. Uh, people come up with statements like the gentleman in Washington to say all these people are Al-Qaeda. Besides Al-Nusra, I don't know who, uh, who is Al-Qaeda. So when you are looking at the rest of the Syrian coalition, uh, how do you know they are all Al-Qaeda? Why don't you think that they are not Al-Qaeda? There are a lot of them who are Kurds, Christians, and uh, Druze. And they are all Al-Qaeda? Uh, I think uh, it is an extension of the imagination to pretend that everybody who people do not like, like the gentleman in Washington, are, is Al-Qaeda, just in order to bash. I'm going to come back to the Al-Qaeda issue. Uh, the second point is uh, Muslim state and genocide. Genocide, genocide against the Kurds and the Druze, but the Kurds and the Druze are Muslims. So what are you telling me? The Muslims are going to commit genocide against the Muslims? The third point, you said, somebody said uh, that uh, Bashar al-Assad is not going to use chemical weapons against his own people. But can you consider what he has used already uh, against his own people? So he's not going to stop at chemical weapons. He has done much worse than that. And let's come back to the solution here. Al-Qaeda, al-Nusra, is, is something that both the Russians and the Americans are against. And the solution is going to come through an agreement which is Russian and American.